understand that you're a professional grandmother. Oh, without a doubt. Absolutely, I am. How many grandkids do you have? We have seven. Six girls and one boy we call Hotshot. Okay, so so you're more a, a, a woman after my own heart, you know, a, a master of uh, dealing with daughters instead of... Uh, instead of boys, yeah. that's right. So what were the things that you saw in Pursuit of a Dream that you thought really reflected or compared and contrasted the, the, the role of women in society? Well, I thought it was interesting that some of, the young, some of the wagon masters were young women that they chose. I think that shows a very different kind of perspective than perhaps it would have been many years ago where men were considered to always be the leader and uh, the, 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 the group as a group chose girls to be their leaders. And perhaps it was because of their age, I'm not sure of that. The girls were a little bit older, I noticed, in, overall in the group. But, uh, but I thought that was very interesting. Uh, maybe, it, maybe it's a sign of our times. Well, maybe it is. Uh, what were some of the things that you would envision as a next step for using that material in a, in a local chapter or community context? I, I like the idea of, um, uh, of doing a trek. Hands-on, I'm a hands-on learner, and I think most people are to a certain extent. I'm sure I read a lot, but I, if I can do it, and I can under, then I can understand it. Uh, I think the short treks, maybe a day or two on the wagon train, with well, maybe even parents and grandparents and the kids, uh, would be a lot of fun. I understand the cost of doing something like that, too, it would be pretty astronomical. Uh, so there would have to be lots of planning and resources that would go into it. But uh, doing things with your kids and your grandkids, that's where it's at. That's how they learn. You know, I could kind of see, I came up from Hutchinson by way of the Flint Hills uh, 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 to Fort Riley, and I stopped off at, I think it was the Rock Springs YMCA camp. Right. So I could kind of see, you know, from and you know, from uh, uh, an environment that that really is focused on, like the 4-H leadership programs right. of yes, that it's 4 being. Yes, 4-H camp, and I've been there many times because our kids were in 4-H, so okay. very familiar with that area. It's a beautiful area. Okay. Well, the hat I'm wearing is uh, from some 4-H leaders. Yes. Yes, that's right. I understand. And and so you know, I I, I tend to be a believer in benchmarking. You know, leadership is something that you do through completed example. Exactly. So exactly. If, you if, show your kids how to lead. Yeah, by your example. You I, I, I think our challenge as as grandparents uh, and parents is to figure out uh, how to pass down the line uh, some of the lessons that we've learned in a way that that, that, that passes the fun test. I, exactly, it ought to be fun. Learning should be fun. Uh, the same with religion and a lot of other things. It should okay. be fun. <laughs> Politics, on the other hand, is just funny. Period. But okay. we won't go there. <laughs> you know, I I I. I my, uh, my mom was my mentor, and she said that the, the, her view of, of grandparenting was the, is to make memories. That's right, and I, and I feel that way too, most definitely, uh, and because I have memories from my youth and my childhood, and, and I want the, the kids and the grandkids to have those good memories too, and they're not all good. I mean, and they should have some memories that make them stop and think, but that's okay too, and that's what I think this program did was memories that made these kids stop and think. I, I thought probably the most powerful part was how, how they dealt with um, relationships uh, mm -hmm. and, and how the people that were doing the wagon train were wise enough to leave them alone and let them do it. Because it's pretty hard as adults for us yeah. to leave them alone and let them work out their own problems. And they truly did that. And I, I was pretty impressed with that. That's an excellent insight. I appreciate your sharing that. It really was. Uh, I worked many years with kids for 20 years. That's what worked with youth programs and job programs with youth. And, and I do know that they're, you know, we don't always like everybody we meet. Mm -hmm. And uh, liking and tolerating are two entirely different things, but we can't tolerate usually. Oh, well, that's an interesting point. Yeah. How do we go from from intolerance to tolerance? To tolerance. Just, you know, you don't have to like them, but you tolerate them, okay? And, you, you, and that's a learned process. You think there's some elements of respect and trust that go yeah, into yeah. To tolerance? Without a doubt. And, and perhaps these youth, as they went along, saw that uh, ability of that person that was leading their, their, their particular uh, wagon. And so they, they gained respect for that person. And respect leads to tolerance. And, and it a lot of times leads to liking, but it doesn't have to go there. Okay. Very interesting. Thank you for sharing your insights. <laughs> You're welcome.